So you're here for basic forms and quizzes. Uh, we will be covering a lot of things. And this is who we are. Farzana Kasim is from LAUSD. She is also an OTAN subject matter expert, and she has some Google certifications. Yay! And that's a picture of her at TDLS, one of our conferences, Technology and Distance Learning Symposium. My name is Melinda Holt. I'm a PS2 at OTAN. I'm also a COABE AFSCI trainer, uh, applied digital skills, Google certified in a couple of areas, and uh, I love Google. So um, if you have any Google questions, I'm probably going to be the one answering if you send an email. <laughs> So um, we've just done intros. We're going to ask in the poll about whether or not you've created some, um, some quizzes. I'll get that up in a minute. Our goal is that you learn the basics of forms and you're comfortable enough to play with it. Above that goal, the icing on the cake is that you actually create and use them with your students. That would be so cool. And if you do that, let us know. That's our agenda today. You have to be able to sign into your Google account. Yes, you need to have a Google account in order to create a form. You don't have to have one to fill a form out. You, you, anybody can fill out a Google form. But you have to have one a Google account in order to create one. For those of you that are following along and you have a browser to your right or your left or up or down or wherever you put it, Go to this address and you will see something similar to what I am sharing with you now. Okay, this is the preview of a handout and I'm going to explain the handout in a minute. So I'm going to leave this here for another 10 count. Everybody write it down. This handout is the live version. So what I just gave you is the live version of the handout. We're going to be we also have a dead version of the handout, which doesn't get updated. This live version, if I see a mistake on it or if Farzana calls me and says, hey, hey, Melinda, we need to add blah, blah, blah to the slides deck, I can do that. And you will always see the changes on this, this slides that we're doing here, okay? What's really cool about it is that it's a book. It's like an ebook. So I'm gonna go to the next slide. And you see all these table, this, this form here of content, not form, this um, area is all links. Every one of these is a link, okay? So I can progress through the book by just hitting my next button or my arrow key and going to the next slide, or I can go back if I wish using my arrow key back and forth, or I can actually click on a link and go to quiz setup. It'll take me right there. And then if I want to return to the TOC, I've got a TOC button on every slide. I will click that and it takes me back to the TOC. So it works like a book. For, so for those of you following along, if uh, we get stuck answering questions on reordering and you wanna move on, you can use this book to go to the next session section. If you already know how to create a form and you just want to know more about settings, you can listen to us in the background and then use this book to go to that spot that you want to, that you want to review or that you want to learn about. An ebook. This is the live version. We will be giving you at the end of this presentation, I'll be giving you the quote unquote dead version. That's exactly the same. But in the future, if I add a section seven, you won't see it on the dead version. You'll only see it on this live version. By the way, if you've noticed, you cannot copy and you cannot download the live version because I want the, the ability to update it and always have it updated. Instead of getting calls, hey, Melinda, could you, I see, could you give me that other one? No, <laughs> just, just come back here, okay? All right, here we go. This is just a screenshot. This is a screenshot of a form once you open it up. Um, there are actually three ways to open up a Google form. Two of them are listed at the top of this slide. One is to go to forms.google.com. And one, if you're signed into your Google account, and yes, you must have a Google account in order to create a form, you could go to forms.new. There are two types of Google accounts. 
One ends in at gmail.com and the other one may end in like at scoey.net or at lausd.org. Those are called G Suites accounts. So either one, you're going to be able to open up a new form. And there's another way to do it. Farzana will show you that. I'm going to stop sharing right now because she's going to take over. Uh, my name is Farzana Kasim, and um, I'm sure you, some of you already know me and some of you don't know me. So um, for this uh, Google Forum, you have many ways to get in. So you can go to either forms.google.com or forms.new. When you go to forms.new, that means you're going to get a blank new you know, uh, form. That's what it is. But next one I want to show you is this. When you click on the new form, and you will be you will just you know see something like this i i like to learn something new when i do not know anything about it i don't really go ahead and click first i like to take a look at like a Char sherlock holmes just observe the whole scene you know so right now just observe this uh, the screen that you have and just like we read in Eng uh, we read um, english from left to right so let's start with the left so when i click on uh, sorry um when you start from the left the first one you see top left is that the little icon that is that is called forms home that is whenever you want to you know get back to the the home page of that form then you come click here and the next one is called untitled form this just like you know um it says on the on the slides file name it is only viewed by you you the owner it means just like we give a name to a file that we create you can just give that name and and so do not confuse this one with this untitled form i'm not sure hold on one second i want to get my little pointer there you go. Okay. So if you type something in here that is only viewed by owner, then if you click on over here, this one, or no need to click, but just follow along, is that add-ons. There are some little cool um, add-ons that Google has. If you wish to, just go and explore that. And the next one is col um, colors uh, palette. And that one, um, is you know that you can change the color of the screen or i mean the the forum if you don't like this uh light pur purplish color or any other color that you want to you can go ahead and change that or you can even have themes they've got plenty so go explore that later on um the next one is just like this little eye that says preview before you send out your form, we should all take a, we should, we should all preview it, right? So we can see whether we have some mistakes or spelling mistakes or, you know, wrong answers or things like that. It's always a good idea to click on that preview before you send out to the public or your students. The next one is settings. That setting um, icon is, should be familiar to all of us pretty much because in many platforms we use the exact same um, um, icon right so this little area is a place where you can tweak your form things like you know how i uh, whatever things that you want to change to how do you want this form to be so this is the area where you're going to come and click on to change your settings so i call it a, an area to tweak your settings yeah so the next one is called the three dots i heard it's a, the street language is kebab i don't know when i'm hungry i see them as kebab when i'm not hungry hungry i see them as three dots so these are the three dots every time you see three dots just like on your phone on your tablets on your laptops on your on your desktop computers any browsers many browsers they all have these little three dots every time you see that that's more form settings so that not only form settings it means more options i meant so the next one is send button of course this should be uh, press after you clean up and you make sure everything is working well with that form, then you send out to the public. Just like it says here on the slide, um, invite to fill form when you want people to go ahead and you know fill out that form or when you want to uh, get links. Um, sometimes you might want to share just the link or you might want to have this form embedded into your courses or your, um, uh, um, what do you call it? the uh, LMS or sometimes on your website, things like that, then, then you may need embed, um, embed code. The next one is responses. This area is when you come 
when you when 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 your audience or when your students or when your colleagues or whoever that you want their form to fill out these their responses are shown here so you can come in here and you can view these responses and you can see who answered what you know if, if it is a question um uh, you know which student answer which answer uh, which you know give what answer all these things can be found here and and it's really neat i always get excited I get your responses. So here we go. The next one is this area. You all should be familiar with. The reason here, the reason is this is the meat. This is the, you know, the area where you're going to, uh, uh, this is the area This with the tools that you will need to build your forms. And just, you know, sit down for a minute, just take a look at them, each one of them and see, try to understand a plus mean to get a new, you know, question. Uh, 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 um, and then you can click on imports if you already have, um, you know, uh, uh, some forms created and you don't want to rebuild more questions. You just want to get those questions out of the, the previous forms that you have. You can go get that. And then you can have titles and images. Titles means, you know, sometimes you might have sections and you might want to let the people know the next session is on essay. The next section is, you know, multiple choice only. The next section is such and such. Since I'm assuming all of you are or most of you are teachers, so I am, and also I'm also a teacher, so I will be, you know, referencing as class or students or, um, um, you know, so in that nature, education nature. But if you are, if you work for officers, um, I really don't know. I'm sure pretty much you can do that, do, do, do these things too. But this little picture is all of us are familiar with, which is images. So that little icon tells you anytime you want to bring in images um, to, you know, to your form, you can do that. And here is the video. We can go wrong with this video. What if you have a YouTube video you want students to see? Or what if you have a specific video you want the students to watch first before they answer the questions? This is, you know, that's something that you can bring in. And and then here you are, the last one on the bottom is called sections. You don't want to give 37 questions on a form bored, you know, making the whole, all the people bored to death with these questions because people are like, when are you going to finish? When are you going to finish? I don't want to answer your questions anymore. In that case, you might want to uh, divide them into sections. So that way people feel like, oh, now I have, after five questions, now I have some time. Okay, I can breathe a little bit, then go to the next section, so on and so forth, right? So um, if you're going to have a lot of questions and, you know, a, a lot of questions, you better make, um, put some sections and it, it is clean, clear, and, and breathable for other um, users. For Sana? Oh, yes. I'm sorry, we have quite a few um questions i'm gonna oh, say sorry. about the add-ons but oh, got it okay um okay. hang on because <laughs> <laughs> they want to know why they don't see it uh, oh um do you, you know the answer no no you sure you do because we and we have discussed this she's probably forgotten folks um the add-on button is always on google accounts at gmail.com public accounts if you don't see it then it's probably because your network has precluded it from being added. They don't want you to add things on to the, um, to the form. Okay. So that's up to your network, whether or not you can install something onto the form. It, it's pretty cool. Some of the tools that you get in add-ons, but it might be precluded. And the screenshot that has been taken was actually from an at gmail.com account. So if your picture or if your form looks a little different, then it's because you maybe have an update that nobody else has gotten yet, or because you're on a G Suite's EDU and your network person has decided, nope, you don't get add-ons, so you don't even see that button. Great. Okay. All right. Um, Thanks for the answer, uh, Melinda. Uh, let me get back to the uh, the next um, arrow. That's is this area is it's it's really handy area. So please, this form is not you know it doesn't have a lot of buttons to memorize or remember or anything. Very clean looking one. So you just take a look at that area that will, should not change to anywhere, you know, no matter what form that you have, those icons will still be there. So let's go over this first. Remember these little three dots? The three dots are kebab 
or not. And those are, that means you have more settings. And when we get there, when we get to the live form, we're going to take a look at it and required. For example, this is, there are a lot of time people say, why, 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 what, what is this required? What it is, is this, for example, you want to know who answered your, you know, who, who took your test or who, um, and you, if you don't want you know, if you don't put this, uh, like for example, name, what is your name? If you want to know who, which student answered this, you know, form or this question or stuff, you need to have, if you want to have the name, then you need to make it required so that we, the person has to type in that first name or last name, whatever that you ask. So this is important. There are some questions you might want to say, okay, if you do not wish to, you no need to answer. Sometimes you might ask them an opinion, you know, and there are sometimes you need to give them an option. They may not answer, you know, they may not want to. In that case, just leave it alone. That means they have an option and that they will not need to answer. If they wish to, they will. If they don't, they don't. So now this one is, we all know, it looks like a trash can. So that means delete and things that you don't want. For example, I don't want this, this question anymore. I made a boo-boo and I don't want it or maybe I have an ex you know it is a repeated question so in that case you can just delete it the next one the next one is called the copy um, so this means for example if you're going to ask you if you want to split last name uh, and the first name so you can say here um, the question will be your what is your last name and that will be one question which is required. And then the next question, I don't want to retype what is your uh, you know, first name. I, because sometimes I want the computer to do the job for me. So in that case, I would just copy this because the, you know everything is all sort set up for me. So I'll just copy it and change from last to first. So that's when you want to, you know, this is just a, sim a simple one that I, a simple one I'm just sh saying because you may, see how how cool this little copy button is okay the next one is question types this is really awesome area this is what it this tells you what type of question are you making for example if you have a multiple choice questions you know and of course what is your name should not be a multiple choice right because you better have one name only um even if you have a nickname it better not be here so you can just say what is your name or what's your last name what's your first name because it is an answer that you want from your audience or your students so in that case it, computer actually knows uh, Google actually knows this is it uh, it depends on your question it changes for you however you can of course go and change to multiple choice or you know other options that we have of course I'm going to show you what those are questions tab if you look at this little underline over here it means you are already in this tab the questions tab the area where you are building your questions okay and whenever you want to go and see responses or things that you want to go and change here that is just you just have to click and it, this little bar will change to this side question aka title statement directions sometimes you might want to tell your students what to do in here so just like the slide uh, on you know, the statements on here, it says, what is this? Ask your question here, ask your, you know, quizzes or whatever quiz question that you want to ask here, just right there, you type it in. The next one is forum name. I started with this here by telling you, this is only view by, viewed by owner, but this area, however, is for your um, audience, your students, they can see that. They will know what kind of form they are filling out. For example, if it is a test, um, a midterm test, then you can say midterm test. Or if it is a, a test number four or quiz number four, you can say quiz number four. This tells the students or your audience what type of form that they are filling out. Yeah? Um, while um, while Farzan is taking a sip of water, you've all noticed and you've been putting it in the Q&A that you see something different than what was on the slide deck or you, your add-on button is actually in the skinny snowman or the kebab as Farzana <laughs> called it. So yes, that is true. And, and I'm just telling you that that's the way it is. <laughs> we will all sometimes see something different. Uh -huh. um, when that happens between Gmail and Gmail, if, if you see something different than Farzana does, then it probably means that Google is on its way to change. So if you see the new version and Farzana is still on the old version, she'll eventually be catching up to you or <laughs> vice versa. Okay, maybe okay. she sees something that you don't yet and it will be coming over soon. 
Okay, for some, right. you ready? All right, so since I already showed you all these little things, there is no way we all remember what these are, right? So let's get uh, to the live forum. Um, I like to, every time I want to do, you know, uh, uh, open a form or, um, I mean, create a new form or a new document or a, a new Excel sheet or anything Google apps related, I always like to come to Drive. The reason is I see this, this is a place, this as a place where my tools, things that I need are here. And so that's why I always like to come to Drive. And just like Melinda said that, you know, you have to have, I mean, you need to have a Google account. Let's take a quickly, quick look at to my right side uh, of the screen. Screen, it says G Suite. And as you can see, I am um, an employee of LAUSD. So I, I am using my um, uh, district account, right? Which is known as a club account. However, I'm not going to go over this. All I just want to do is to let you know is I'm going to go to Drive and I want you to know that I'm using the LAUSD account. Well, how, the way I like to get my um, a blank form, a, a blank form is go to my drive, I click on more, I know it is hidden, I don't know why, but one day it will get a chance to come up over here and get its, you know, spotlight. But for now, it is hiding here and I love its, you know, its place. I know where it is. So I'm going to just go ahead and click on Google Forms. As soon as I click on it, you will see a blank form that I've been talking about the past two, three, five, ten minutes. Here we go. We have our entitled form. Let's quickly take a look at one more round, okay? Not that I'm going to explain all over again, but major ones I want to quickly show you to you. If you remember this one, this one is known as the forms home, and that's the one I was talking. And those of you who are following along um, with on another tab, you will see those, right? This is the area. You might want to give a, a name of, you know, a file name. So I'm gonna just call this one, I don't know, this word came in today. So Burlington English sign up form. That is the name of the file that I'm gonna see. But this, however, is the area I don't want them to see. All I want is, this is, I don't know, what season, what are we? Are we, we are in spring, spring 2020, BE sign up. So that tells me I am using this form for the spring 2020, Burlington English sign up. This is for my, uh, 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 you know, audience or, or my, uh, whoever is filling out to see. Here is the form descriptions. It is up to you. It's optional. You do not need to fill out anything. If it tells you something, you know, if, it, if you need to give some kind of instructions to the people, make sure you do this, you do that, some kind of instructions that you need to give, go ahead and type it in here. And this is the one when I was talking about last time, the little underline that you all see, this means I am under the question, I'm building my question, and this is my questions page. If I go to responses, here we go. I can, right now, of course, the form is not live yet, so there, is, there are no responses, right? So this is just another form I just created to show you. So I'm gonna just close it because I do not need it now. But this, however, is the one I was um, I started with you. So all of these, we, we have them. Uh, I mean, I showed them to you when you are all ready, you're gonna go ahead and click send and you will find out what else you need to do here. So, and this one is the little settings area where you can do your, um, uh, you know, uh, tweak a little bit here, depends on where you are, I mean, what organization or district you are in, and it will be different. But before that, I'm gonna click on it. So Melinda um, uh, mentioned, uh, explained it to you about the add-ons. It looks like our district allows us to have add-ons. And so, you know, that's something you might want to check with your district. If you open it, you might, whether you have it or not. And this is the, uh, the, uh, the, co uh, the colors that you can choose or the theme that you can choose. Let's see, right now it's a um, purple, right? So what if I change it to orange? There it is. I am in a bright mood today. If it were raining, I'm gonna go with this color. No, no, it is up to you, whatever mood that you have or whatever is appropriate for you, right? So those of you who are interested in having an and uh, uh, what you call it, header, you know? So you just go ahead and click on things like that. So these are a few things that you might want to explore on your own. Um, so 
this area, was, uh, as I mentioned it before, these little buttons are your tools, things that you will need to build this form. Why don't we start creating a form? Which, well, actually, I started creating a form, right? Why don't we start adding a question? So why do, if you want to add a question, all you have to do is simply click on it. It already um, highlighted for you and just go ahead and ask your question, you know? What is your last name question mark did you notice this one automatically changed to short answer but of course you do not want to change to anything else because it is a question you are asking you want someone to answer that so leave it alone as it is what if it were something else what is your favorite color but you want them to choose only from the, the ones that you want to want them to answer. For example, orange. You see, I change it to multiple choice because I'm gonna give them several choices. Pink. So that's what it is by multiple choice. Let's take a look at the check box, check boxes. Whenever you have a check boxes, sometimes check box. Most of the time, check boxes mean you can select more than one answer. So, you know, sometimes you, you know, there are some surveys that I'm sure you all have filled out. And when they ask you to do uh, something and they will say in a parenthesis, select, you know, more than one or select all that applies, you know, whatever it is that you can do that. So drop down is some something that you might want people to choose from because you have to build, you know, a few things. For some reason, I thought, Melinda, I don't remember seeing that. Anyway, I, I, maybe I didn't pay attention to this one, but that's, um, that's something it I just- It will show up on preview. I see. Okay. Um, so if you have some, you know, sometimes you might want your students to answer certain, um, you know, like long paragraph or some kind of opinions, uh, you know, they need to give you. In that case, change it to paragraph. Depend on your question um, that you ask over here, you need to come and change. All right. So I'm going to go back to my short answer because I'm going to change this because I want to start with what is your last name because I want to go i want to sort after i receive all my responses i may want to sort by last name so that's why i'm going to split like i said i want the computer to do the job for me so i'm going to duplicate but before i click duplicate i want to make it make this question as a required so that means whoever answers it they must answer that yeah and so i'm going to go ahead and click duplicate and this time i'm going to change last name to first name that's the idea of having this little duplicate so you have whatever that you have you can just have it sometimes you may even let's create another one so you will know what i'm talking about let's add a third question here is a third question in this question i'm going to ask um have you had your breakfast Oh, I love these sessions, yeah? Yes, it automatically fills it for me. And I go here, no, what if I want to say maybe? What if I have another option, other, right? So yes, no, maybe other. But that means I have four answers that I need to fill out. I'm not going to, the next question that I'm going to ask, I'm going to have the exact same answer, but the question will be the same. I mean, sorry, the question will be different, but the answers will be the same. In that case, I want that duplicate again. So let's go ahead and click duplicate. Watch what happens. All these answers are over here, but the question is the same. So I'm going to go erase it. I don't even have to select. How cool is that? This Google it understands that I'm going to change it. So I'll don't don't bother selecting any of those. Every time you see these little bluish color select you know, the words are selected for you, just leave it alone, start typing. Don't even press delete or backspace, just start typing, seriously start typing. Make the computer work for you, okay? All right, what's the next question I should ask? Have you gone out at all? Something like, I don't know. So you may have some answer over here, or you can go change it. That's the uh, duplicate. So the next one I would like to do is this. What if I change my mind and I say, oh, you know what? I don't want to split 
What's your last name with the what's your first name? What I would like to do is this. I want to just change it to what is your name? Do you see? Oh, I'm going to hold on. Hold on. Okay. The way to what I'm about to do is I'm going to edit it. I don't want last name anymore. I just want what is your name? So all I need to do is double click on the word last last and erase it, right? So that is a type of editing that you are doing. What is your name now? And, and so you just have one question. People have to just give them full name or they can just give a first name. They can just give a last name. So if you want to really specify, then you can say, what is your full name? So I'm editing a question over here. And then I found out, hmm, I already asked what's your full name. So why should I even have this this what's your first name over here in that case what do you think i should do of course i need to delete this question because i have no need for it because it's you know redundant or almost redundant so let's click delete there you go it's gone goodbye it says here item deleted if you want to undo it go ahead and quickly click undo now i don't want to undo i like what my well, what i ask so here is what's your full name short answer have you had your breakfast every time i move my mouse and click in one of these um any of these question you can just you see it gives you it allows you to edit whatever you want to do with each one what if i have the what if i want this question to be the second question instead of um, third question. Let's take a look at something here. You see this little area? I don't know if you can see it. There you go. How about now? You see these um, six, six dots area? That is the little handle area. Just as it, it, it gives you a way to move things or move questions around, okay? So I want to move, you have a choice of moving the two to three or three to two. So I'm gonna just go ahead and move that three by clicking and dragging it up. As you can see, I'm moving it. And here we go. I will just release my mouse. It will move to second. Right. So what is your full name was my first question. And my second question is, have you gone out at all? The third question now is, have you had your breakfast? So you can move your questions around or that is called reordering because you are trying to reorder questions. There may be times that you may need to. So don't be rigid with, I have to have number two over here, number three over here. No, just ask your questions, go around, check them, reorder them, re-edit whatever you need to you know, be flexible with it and enjoy along the way. So that Arzana, is um, it is. Nope. some of those questions that you, that you created, um, they were auto populated with answers like yes, no, maybe other. What if you don't want maybe? That's right. I don't want maybe. Let's say in this case, have you gone out at all? I only want them to answer yes or no. There is no other maybe. So in that case, you see here it says maybe. Let's take a look at on the right side. It says remove. If, you, if I move it, you can see it. It says remove. X. I don't want to maybe. I will just simply remove it. It's all gone. I don't even have, I don't even want other. What if I don't even want other? Same deal, just remove it. All I want is yes and no. So that is another way for you to, you know, clean out your answers. Sometimes there are things that were given and then you feel like, huh, what, what, what is this? What is this? You don't need it? Just simply click it. So I hope I answered that question. Um, now, the next thing I want to show you is, let's go and create one more question. I only have three questions, as you can see. Let's create one more question. If I click add question now, it will come between my second question and third. And if, it, if I don't want it, just like I showed you a few minutes ago, just simply move it down. Right. So if I can move it that way, you can you have you just be flexible. Just go to this third question or the fourth question and move it up. So you will still have your the, the, the order that you want. Here's the question. Now, this uh, the fourth question. What if I want to have an image? I want to have an image so my students can or, my, or your students or your audience can see. Ah, this is what it is, right? So sometimes you may have words or answers for them with a question uh, with an image. So let's say 
I don't know. I need to have which one is a cat. I'm going to add an image here. I'm going to go to Google image search. Oh, this time I don't have a cat. Oh, how lovely these are. Hello. I will take you with me. I click on it and I click insert. And here is a little cat. It is, if it is too big for you, all you have to do is click on the picture first. There are four corners. Just resize it to the way you want. How cool is that? Don't try to, you know, don't, don't be too worried about it. Slowly go the way that whatever size you want. Uh, it, it, as you can see, I can go slow, smaller than that. And so, because it doesn't allow me to. So that's the only size it allow the smaller size it allows me to have. In this case, I can say this one is a cat. Or maybe I, sh or maybe I should change the question right now. Um, you don't even have to have anything. Melinda, jump in anytime. And so here is a cat and I want another image. Oh, these are too cute. And I want this little one, click insert. There is another one. I'm gonna resize it. Late. Look, come on, it's 9.54 a.m. We are working at home. I want, I still want to be in bed, right? So I'm going to bring in these little ones here too. So you can just bring in an image like this. You can have your, uh, the caption, you know, the title of this each and every one. So that's how you can come and play with these adding images and moving things around. Um, and you can have all your questions and answers over here. The next, since you know this is all about how to bring in image or how to add images i want please let's look at something here with me at this time my mouse focus is on this question the reason i know it is that's the, the reason I know I'm working on this is because of this blue bar on this side. This blue bar tells me currently I'm working on this. So if I click on this add question button, then that new question will go under here. But if I click on this one, my focus is changed to cat question here. And if I click it here, it will go between cat and dog. So just, you know, if you don't feel like that, you know, you, you, um, you don't want to, reorder or re you know reorder again in that case just go to the question that you want and then you click on add questions so the next one will be just automatically um you know uh, put under it so at this time why don't we add a video Arizona, yes. I'm gonna jump in let's let's close this okay, okay. so go ahead um uh, on this question it's option one right yes um when you s scroll your mouse towards the right and you should see a little, there we go. Yes. So we had the question, if you want to add pictures and allow people, which one is the cat, which one is the dog, which one is right, you could actually add them on multiple right. choice uh -huh. or, um, there we go. You, you can add the pictures to the side, yes. Okay. Google image search, because this is all Google images, so it's so easy to just find it here. Here you are again. Let's go and insert you. And here it is, cat with this picture. And now I have another one. Thank you, Melinda. Sure. And right there, you see, she makes the computer work for you. I even move my mouse so far out. You see, all you have to do is over here, yeah, and the, in the, in that same line. The cool thing about is that computer. Uh, Google automatically um, aligns things for you. How neat is that? You don't even have to go do anything. So just go to dog, click on dog. What happened? Oh, there you are. And I will click insert again and it will be aligned nicely. And that's a, did you notice the two different things? When I click on image, and it resized it for me, automatic resize. When I clicked on, 
this image I had to resize. Sometimes I like making mistakes and this is the best time for me to show you. If I were not in making mistakes, you wouldn't see the difference. Did you all notice that difference? When I got my cat, it was big. I had to resize it. When I got the way Melinda showed me, it automatically resized for me. How cool is that? I don't have to do these things. I feel like this question is no longer needed. So what do you think I should do? Of course, the delete button. Let's click on it. I feel like I'm in power now. I'm deleting things now. Go for it. This one too. I don't need it. Click on it. There goes. Now I have, I can ask my question now. Which one? is a cat there you go they can just select whichever one is the you know um, um a cat or a dog and if you want to confuse them more bring in a parrot bringing a penguin marjorie is here so a penguin i like a i like um giraffe so i'm gonna bring in a giraffe go for it whatever that you are doing of course don't go too crazy with all these images because it may you know it may be too confusing to others but let's look at something and let's, I want to show you, I forgot, one second, Melinda, I forgot to change this little thing. You see that? If I want to make it required, I need to make, I need to turn this on. So, um, so this, you know, all these questions that you can create. And the, the last thing I quickly want to show you, because there are a few things that you guys can do, but, you know, videos, just go ahead and just quickly click on add question go straight to video and in this video uh, in here you have a choice of um i'm looking for a youtube video or if you have a specific link you just go ahead and type it in here so you go ahead and find any video that you want once you have it it will allow you to click select okay so melinda and so if you think um uh, uh, should i continue well, uh, let's not do the let's video do the that second. correct right okay yeah, let's let's, let's have them see what they've yes. created so far yes um i don't need this one because i made a mistake right because i i really don't need need it so i'll just click delete and i want to have a clean looking ones i have one two three four questions now i need to see how it will look right so here we go there is a preview button so i'll click on the preview button and this is how it will look like to your audience or to your students. What's your full name? They will just type in. And have you gone out at all? Either yes or no. Have you had your breakfast? Yes, no, maybe, whatever, right? Which one is a cat? Here is a cat. Remember, if you go ahead and click and answer any of these questions, you will be given a, um, a, a um, responses, right? Your responses will be recorded. Have you gone out at all? Actually, now, two weeks straight now. Have you had your breakfast? No, I was too nervous to eat. Which one is a kid? I'm going to make a, a mess. Click submit. Now, let's quickly go and look at it. This one, um, we'll come back. Just keep a, pay attention on this one for now. Let's go back here. Let's take a look at these responses. Because I just answered something with you all just now. You see these responses? I have one response. So. Here we go. For Zona Kasim, one response said no. And the other one, it says, have you had breakfast? Yes, no. This little chart is so awesome. If you have more students, you know, you can just go through individual one or you can go and see which question was answered by who, all these things. So you can just click on it. They are nothing to, you know, there's no special skills to learn. It just, you know, click point and you will get it. This is really cool. But I want Melinda to explain to you about some settings. And these are the few things that you need to do before you send out your form. So next up, Melinda. So I was actually referring somebody to, uh, we've done that, we've done that. Look at all this stuff. We didn't add a video. We didn't do file uploads. Uh, Farzana did show you how to preview. Now, I also had a form started. It's not nearly as complete as <laughs> Farzana's. Just to recap though, so this is the title of the form and I can name it anything I want, right? I'm the owner, I get to decide. If I click where it says untitled form, it actually takes this name um, of what everyone sees, it will be up here. But if I want to add something to it, attendance, let's say June, you see it, that's my file name. 
Okay. Um, again, this is just a quick recap. So untitled question, if I type name, look at that, Google already changed it because they know that, hey, when you type a name, it's not a multiple choice. It is something somebody's going to type. We had a few questions that came in the chat. Don't you want to require that? And Farzana did show that. I never require any questions until after I've gone through and tested the entire form. Some of the forms that I've created have had three or four sections. And if I require the questions, then I have to answer every one. Where, and if I just want to check out that one question that's on the third section, <laughs> I have to I have to respond to everything. So I wait until I test. <clears throat> and then, and I'll just go ahead and add a section real, real quick. So we got name. Uh, uh, I'm trying to do this fast. Uh, grade. There we go. So we got attendance. Um, and then a question might be, what grade are you in currently? So, and look, I put, what grade are you in? And I haven't even finished typing the, the question, but Google's going, hey, this sounds like uh, you might want freshman, sophomore, junior, or senior. I don't know if you can see that. It's pretty light. So I'm just going to add all of them, and then it's all added for me. So Google, yes, Google knows what you're thinking. It's peering deep into your brain and going, <laughs> we know, we got you. No, they don't. All right. It's a suggestion. If you don't like the answers, and Farzana also went over this, you can delete them. Or you can delete them all. You don't have to, to accept what they give you. You can delete them all and, and add your own. The preview is way up here so that you can type in. Remember, I didn't require it, right? So I can go to the next. And that's why I did that. So maybe I just want to test whether or not this actually came across correctly. When I don't require things, then I can test it out a little bit. We also had a question, hey, I'm still in preview mode. How do I get back to my form? When you select the preview, when you select that little eyeball, a new tab opens. So I'm moving my mouse over the where it says attendance, right? That's the name that everyone sees. That's the name that the people see when they're filling out my form, attendance. Right here is the file name. So that tells me that this is where I can edit my form. Now, so the settings. When we have uh, a form, you have settings that you can manipulate. So there's a gear, if you're following along, up at the top of your, your, uh, your form that you've created. If you click on this little gear, you're gonna get three tabs that go across. First one's general, second one's presentation, third one's quizzes. Collect email addresses, don't do it. Don't do it, don't, because it will require people to be signed into an account, okay? So um, I wouldn't do this if you want it to be an open form. Now, if you want to collect email addresses, by all means, select that. And when you do, you're given the option to send response receipts or get response receipts. And they, get, they tell you what it is. Respondents receive a copy of their responses. So for those of you that were asking, can the students get a, a, a printout of what they responded? This is one way to kind of do that, All right? But they will be, they will be prompted for their email address. And I don't even, I didn't put email address, or I don't have to put email address in the form when I'm creating it. Google, as soon as I click this box, will do that because I've required it. Okay, so when you require things, it might or it will, let me rephrase that, when you change things on the settings tab, it will require things on your form. So I'm going to deselect that, I'm just telling you what it is. You can, you can do it or not, it's up to you. Require sign in. If I limit to one response, then respondents will be required to sign into Google. This is something that you might want to consider if you have a classroom, a Google Classroom. You might want to limit their response to one because it's a quiz. And if it's a quiz, you only want them to do it one time. And they have to be signed into their Google Classroom. So this really doesn't matter. If they're going from classroom into the form, they're already signed in. So they won't have to do anything. 
If they're not signed into Classroom and they come to the form, they'll be prompted to sign in. So that might be something that you consider as well. Now here's where we get to decide, can the respondents, these are the people filling out your form, can they edit after submit? Do I want them to be able to change their answers? It depends on the form. If it's a quiz, the answer is probably no. If it's, um, oh, I forgot that I wanted to add, if you ask what they're interested in, let's say you ask uh, what classes do they want to take, and then they, they get to the end of the form and it's all of a sudden, oh, I forgot I wanted to learn English and I didn't put that down. So you might want them to edit after they submit. Uh, you might also want, to, want them to see what the summary charts and text responses are. You might want them to see maybe the form type that you're creating is a poll and everybody gets a vote. Are we gonna go to the park tomorrow, as long as we're six feet apart, or are we gonna stay at home? Are we gonna work from home? So you get the choice, right? And if you want the students to see what everybody else is voting for or what everybody else has voted for, past tense, then you would let them see this. On the presentation tab, I'm going to click that. And remember, um, Farzana, if any questions come up that I need to answer while I'm doing this, yes. please, please yes, let me know. Yes. Okay. So do I, if I have a really long form, like Farzana was saying, if you have 37 questions, you definitely want to have sections, okay? But you also might want them to see a progress bar. Because if I've got this form in front of me that someone's asked me to fill out and I start filling it out, it's like, God, it's, just, it's going on forever. How much more do I have to do? Well, the progress bar will tell me I've finished 90%. Okay, I can handle that. I can go a little bit more. All right, but if I've already asked, answered 30 questions and I'm only at 20%, I don't know. <laughs> I might not do the whole thing. Um, shuffle question order. Be careful using this. I'm just putting this out there um, because that means it's going to shuffle everything. And that includes the name. No, you cannot pin a question to the top so that it's always the first question if you shuffle. When you shuffle the form, you shuffle everything. Okay. Linda? Yes. There is a question. It says, I just made a sample form and sent, um, sent it to my husband. When he tried opening it, he got the message that he needs permission to open. Is there a setting of permissions on Google? There probably form? is because she sent it instead of give, gave him the, the form link. So I, I'm com that's, about, that's coming up. <laughs> I'm glad you did that, whoever it was. I will show you that in just a second. Um, show link to submit another response. Maybe... Um, I, there's lots of reasons you want to do this. Maybe you're having a potluck and somebody wants to do uh, the main course, but they also want to do dessert. So you want them to have the capability to come back. And this just gives them a link when they fill out the form that they can redo the form. The confirmation me message at the end of a form, we've all seen this, your response has been recorded or thank you for your response. You can change the message. You done good. That ought to make some English teachers really riled up. Um, but you can change this, okay, to whatever you want. Quizzes, this is where you can make something a quiz. This is where you can release the grade. This is where you decide whether or not the respondents can see missed questions, correct answers, or point values. Personally, I don't think any teacher is going to ever select this. <laughs> Unless it's a pre-test or a pre-quiz and you actually want them to see the correct answers. So you can use a form that way too. Okay. All right. Now I'm going to cancel this. I'm not going to save anything. I'm just going to keep it the way I wanted it. But if you made changes and you want to save those changes, then you have to save. Okay. Now the person that sent the form, they use the send button. And that is very intuitive, isn't it? Because you want to send the form to people. No, you don't. You really don't. Um, what you want to do is you want them to fill it out, right? And in order for the, I mean, you could use this, but it's so much easier to just use your eyeball. Okay. There's the link. Here's the link to the form. So if you select that and send it to somebody, they should. Not always, but they should be able to fill it out. Why do I say not always? Because you might be in a club. And in a club, and this question actually came up right at the beginning. Uh, thank you, Mr. Barry Bakin. 
I am going to go to uh, let's see, what am I? Oh, forms.google.com. This is another way to open up a form. By the way, here you get all kinds of stuff. We also had the question, how many, you know, what, what can you do besides adding questions? I'm going to look at the template gallery. So I went to forms.google.com. I'm going to click on template gallery. And here are all the different kinds of forms that Google has created templates for. As soon as you click on one of them, it is yours. Because it's yours, you can change it. So if there's a question on event registration that you don't want, you can just delete it or change it however you want. So this is a Gmail or a, a public account. Right now, I'm going to go to my SCOE account. I'm going to sign in. Hang on just a sec. Why am I going here? Because I want you to see the difference between sharing on between a club and a pub. So I'm on my club, okay? Um, when I go to share my form, this is one thing I have to look for. Um, when I send this form, it's automatically collecting respondents from Sacramento County Office of Education. Well, hang on a minute. What if the person I'm sending it to doesn't have a SCOE or Sacramento County address? I need to deselect that. That's number one, okay? I just go ahead and hit send because to me that's, um, or, yeah. Now they changed that too. All right, that used to be a send save here. All right, so that isn't selected, so that's good. I also look at the other things here just to make sure I didn't miss anything. Now I'm gonna go to the more button. Uh, Farzana called it the kebab. I kind of like that. I've also heard it called the skinny snowman. <laughs> and I'm going to, check my preferences. So on the skinny snowman, preferences. Okay. Here's some, some people had asked, how do you make this default? How do you make questions required? Again, I don't do it because I like testing my forms. You can also require collecting. So every time you uh, make a new form, you collect email addresses, make questions required, or you can set the default quiz value. So every time you create a new quiz, it will always be if you put in here 20, it will always be 20 points. Can you change that after you do it? You bet. It's your form. You can do what you want to do. Um, there is another, here we go, and collaborators. If I want to share with somebody, right now it's only to me, okay? Only I can access it. I'm going to change that just so that you can see all of my different options right here. This is sharing the edit rights to the form. Don't give your students edit rights to the form. Hit preview, that little eyeball, and collect that or select copy the, the link. It'll say view form at the end of it, okay? But if I want to share this form with somebody, on most clubs, on, on most G Suite's EDUs, this will be selected. This right here, so that I can only share with the people that have the same domain that I do. This is usually the default. Why isn't it the default on my account? Because I'm a G Suites administrator <laughs> and I can do anything I want. So there. <laughs> All right. Um, so when you, you check your settings here, I'm going to turn this off. Okay, so I can share it with anyone now. Now, here's the thing. Your G Suite's administrator might have decided, mm, no, we don't want you to share with anybody outside of our domain. You have to talk to them. All right, They're, and you got to have a good reason for it too. Um, so check those settings. So those are some preferences that you need to check before you send the form to people. Make sure that you're not requiring an email address. Um, send them the link. Okay, send them the link to it. That's the easiest way to do it. I don't ever suggest using the, the send button. I always tell people to click on the preview button, select this link that's in the address bar, and then send that to people. Now, this is a really long link, and the links that I sent you or that I gave you were um, from Bitly. So I use Bitly to shorten links. I just saw a question, how to insert a video. 
it's really simple. So there's lots of videos in the world. View them before you put them in your form. Yeah. View them in their entirety. Find the one that you want, click on it, select it, and that is done. Now, I'm, you, what I usually do after I add something is I preview. You can only watch a video in preview mode. Now, you're not going to hear the sound because I didn't um, share my audio. Okay? But when you preview it, then you can watch the video. Right here, I have no play button. I can't do anything except resize the video. Okay, so that's how you add a video. Um, I'm gonna go back here. Let's go through this handout real quick. So there we've talked about the journal tab. We've talked about the presentation tab. We talked a little bit about the quizzes tab. And the lock, this is on, let me do the present, present on here, on a club. If you're using a G Suite CDU, you will see something different than people that are not, um, that are using a public account. You'll see quiz options. This is only for managed Chromebooks. So if your students have a Chromebook that's been managed or is managed by your district, then you could turn on locked mode, but that means they have to be able to sign into the Chromebook. If, they, if they're using a guest account, or if they're using an at gmail.com account when they use the Chromebook, both perfectly valid ways to do it, you should not turn on this locked mode because if you do that, it's gonna keep them from using this form. They have to have an, the same domain that you do or the same domain as your district does in order to turn this on. This is usually just used for K-12. So if your students have lucked out and they have an at LAUSD.net account, woohoo! You've got a lot more than what you think you do, and your students do too. So you could turn on this locked mode if they are using a Chromebook that is managed by your district. If they have their own Chromebook that they bought on their own, that's not being managed by anybody but them. So don't turn on locked mode. If you have a variety, if you have some people on laptops, some people on Chromebooks that are being uh, managed and some people on Chromebooks that aren't, then don't turn on locked mode, <laughs> right? It's very rare that you will ever turn this on and that's only if you have a club. You won't see it if you're on a Gmail. Do we have any questions that came in? Does Google collect info? I see that question. Absolutely. You bet. Does it I, use it for anything? No, because they're not allowed to. Okay, they are, um, they have to, uh, adhere to the FERPA, COPA, and SIPA rules. So when you're using a class or you're using anything for a class, uh, th they can't use the information. Now, if you're on a gmail.com and uh, it knows, Google notices that you're doing a lot of searching for wool socks, you're going to find wool socks a lot faster than what you, that somebody that doesn't search for them. Okay. So, I mean, every browser collects data. Right, but if you're using a specific tool underneath the G Suites, then the answer is no, they're not collecting data. Um, even, if, if, even if you're not, if you're using a Gmail, they're not collecting your, your social security number. They're not collecting anything that's going to harm you. And if you're worried about them getting that picture of you that's uh, with your, the, the lampshade on your head at the, the office party, you don't want that to be on the web then take it out of the internet, take it off the internet, <laughs> okay? It shouldn't be on the cloud. If you're worried about anything, don't put it on the cloud. If you don't want your boss to see it, if you don't want your students to see it, if you don't want your partner to see it, if you don't want your neighbor to see it, if you don't want your mother to see it, don't put it on anything, even though it's password protected. Because how many times have we seen so-and-so's personal pictures, some actor or actress's personal pictures have been, they're on some uh, uh, newspaper now, right? We've all seen those stories. So don't put it on the web. I got off, I got off of forms. Uh, more settings. Default settings. Here's, I, we already went over that. Okay. 
Send and stop. Farzana. I am back. Um, I just quickly want to answer the question. There was a question, um, two questions. The first one is how do we add a section? Here we go. This is this little one. It says add section. So just click on it and go from there. And the second second question was how did she how um, how did she get the form to the um, drive quickly? So I usually go like this. You see, if it says here forms home on the upper left corner, top left corner, I click on it. Once I click on it, it would take me to the three bars, but I'm hungry now. So I'm going to call it hamburger menu. So you click on that hamburger menu. There is your Google Drive. That's how you can get to your drive quickly within that. Yes, I would like to um, go to the live form again, or if not, we can quickly show you. So when you click on send there was a question someone said that um, I did not see the link so yes you did not see the link if you click on preview you will not see the link however if you click on send you will get the link this second one is the link and it tells you a link but look at this link this is a, it's it's like really long so there's no way I'm gonna do anything you know copy or type or whatever I'm gonna shorten it so I can click shorten it so it is smaller right once you have it don't bother selecting and copying right clicking and any of those don't do that please it is already selected simply click copy that's all you do all you once you copy it says copy to click uh, to to clipboard on the bottom bottom left a few seconds ago it showed you right so once you have it it is yours I mean all you have to do now is just go to your email open up an email whatever you want to just you know paste that link that's all you have to do or if not, you can just, you know, um, uh, uh, <clears throat> um, you know, like sometimes you text or sometimes you send your students uh, 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 remind messages or something like that. You can do all those things. Just, you know, use those short links. That's the um, uh, under the send form. So send via um, email. So if you want to type some, you know, your your um, the participant names or the students names or the whole class. Someone had a question, can I send the form to the whole class? Yes, you go ahead and type in your um, addresses. So like, let's say this is the um, Gmail account that I have. I wanna send it to this email, for example. And then I want to send um, uh, Barry to his email, to his district email. So here it is, I'm gonna click on that. And then the subject, it's you know the same, the same as the form. Here is something I want to show you two things here message you write your message whatever you want to tell them but this please do not take do not make a mistake with two and this two is to whom do you you want the forms to fill out or you can click on add collaborators when you click collaborate add collaborators you are allowing so and so whoever the person you know like melinda or penny or or anthony or marjorie you want them to edit this form whatever form that you know of course you have your own uh, colleagues and all but uh, this time i can only think of their names so um you know you can just add those collaborators how do you do it here you already have this the link ready for you the link will be shared now this is where you're going to go and invite people you can just start typing you know whoever your colleagues that you want or who, whoever um you know is your collaborator that you want them to be, you go ahead and type their name, you know? So things like that, I'm gonna go ahead and type, I want Barry to do something about it, edit files directly, he can just go ahead and edit that. Once, if you want Barry to know, hey Barry, you please go ahead and do your, you know, edit part, then you need to let them know, you, you can let them know by selecting this, notify people, or you can add a message and you click send. That's all you need to do, which I'm not gonna do that because I know Barry has like thousands of emails. So I'm not gonna do anything now. And I'll just simply click, come back out. So that's the send, you know, about the ad collaborators. Link, I just went over it, embed code, embed code, um, uh, you know, M Melinda sort of went over it, but you just, you know, if you are, if you are asking about emb embed code, what is embed code? So at this time, you might want to do, you know, do some exploring, but um, because the topic of, um, you know, this, I don't really want to get into the embed code, but quickly, if you have an embed code, links like that you can put them on your you know um your google classroom links or things that you are trying to have ready you know especially like um if you have an lms system some kind of canvas or some some kind of schoology and you want to embed something just you know the whole thing can be embedded into or a website and you just simply have to click copy that's all you need to do and then 
here, um, Melinda already explained about automatically collecting respondents LEUSD email because I am logging in and showing you as LEUSD. So this is the reason I have it here. Once I'm done, I just close or cancel it. Um, one second. Last thing I would like to show you is the, let's say this is spring sign up. Spring is, you know, I want, I want to have at certain time, certain day, I don't want any more responses. I don't want people to fill out anymore because I have a limited time or especially with the quizzes, you don't want to give them more than two days or depends on what you do, right? So if you want to stop these responses, I don't want students to come back and you, uh, students or audience to continuously answer it, you know, uh, filling out the form. I want them to stop if that is the case from here, to here, just come to responses. This beautiful button is right here. No need to do anything. All you have to do is slide it. Once you slide it, it says not accepting responses. You want to be nice and courteous and everything? Go ahead and type something here. For now, we pause this form until next term or whatever that you want to say. You know, you can just say thanks for um, filling out the form. You know, this form is no longer accepting responses, whatever, that, whatever message that you want to give them. Sometimes I feel like, you know, um, giving them a little, you know, it's like a human touch. Talk to them a little bit, you know, well, why you are stopping this. So you give them your, your instructions, uh, whatever that you want to say. That's all you need to do in terms of, um, it, you know, stopping the responses. And uh, here, let's say in, this is spring 2020. And then after spring, I'm going to have summer. What if the summer comes and I want to change it? So in that case, I'm gonna go ahead and turn it on and I'll go back to questions and because I'm gonna use the same questions again. And so I'm gonna simply go straight because I'm gonna repurpose it. I'm gonna reuse it. I don't want spring anymore. I want summer 2020 and all the questions will be the same and then responses are here. But there is one thing must say after that um it will be melinda's term but one thing i need to we have not touched upon is the creating a spreadsheet you need we need to know where these answers are going to go to right all these responses that we create uh, the students or the audience gave you or we collected so you can go ahead and click create spreadsheet the the information that we collected from them the data that we collected from them can be for me, I like to have, because these are, you know, different data. So I don't want to have, you know, I don't want to put them in the existing spreadsheet. I like to have a new spreadsheet, completely new, nice and clean. So in that case, I'm gonna select create a new spreadsheet. Here, the name of that file, you know, the, the form, I'll leave it at that. And if I click on create, linking to a spreadsheet, computer, Google is doing, the linking for you. You don't need to create a new Excel. You don't need to start typing this or that, nothing. The, that's the really beautiful, you know, uh, thing that uh, Google Form has. Look at this, Burlington English sign up form. I didn't give this name, it got it from my form. The difference between these two, the one on the top, the tab, it says is form. The one here, it says responses. How cool is that? It tells you the difference, right? Which one is the form? Which one is the responses? Here, there was a question. Um, it says, how, um, how can I export the data? to Excel spreadsheet. Yes, of course, this is your Google, Google Sheet. Even though this is a Google Sheet, the data is over here with the Google Sheet, you all know you can just go ahead and download as Excel. Here we go. We just have to change it to Excel. Some of you are Microsoft, you know, uh, 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 fan and some of you are Google fan and I, I, I am a two timers. So I, 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 you know, I go crazy with the Google one day and the next day I, I hate Google and I go back to Microsoft and things like that. So I have a different relationship with these two, two platforms, but don't worry, just because it is Google sheet doesn't mean you can't do anything, you know, uh, in Excel, just go straight to file, click on download and click Microsoft Excel. That's all you have to do. And it would download it as Excel and you will have all your data, all these things that you collected and you can go ahead and sort it out. You can do all those things. And I don't really want to get into this unless Melinda thinks go get into it, we'll do. If not, 
in the future, I'm going to have a Google, you know, um, Google Doc and Google Sheet. When I have that workshop, maybe we can dive in more. What do you think, Melinda? Absolutely. <laughs> okay. I believe it is the end from me. Here we go. Hi, oh, one second, one second, oh, one second, please. If you do not mind, there was a question. Somebody said, how did you get the pointer? Um, in order to get a pointer, the pointer um, someone was asking is this. I know it is not it's nothing really to do with um, um, for Google Form or anything. It has to do with um, Zoom webinar. That is a tool that is available that Melinda um, can tell more about. It is part of the annotation and that you can get when you are a co-host, you are allowed to have these tools. And when you get the tools that you can, um, you can get out of annotation tool, there is a button called Spotlight. That's where you get that little spotlight. And it is useful, but I would rather that uh, Melinda answers that question or you know, continue with my answer. All right, something that I did want, um, because I have, I have a form that I created, it called an attendance form. Don't go here, it's just a demo. I, I saw that bit.ly up there and I know exactly, oh, they're all gonna try and go to it. So when you start getting responses, Farzana's form only had one response on it, so you didn't really get a good look at some of the, the stuff that you can do. And this, I'm only asking one question, or two questions, name and email. So as you're looking at responses the responses go into the form and they go into that spreadsheet that you can create okay here this form is actually a quiz so i know the point distribution okay i will also see when i have a quiz um and i, I might open one up for you so you can see that as well i'll see little graphics so i can tell how many people know the right answer now everybody knew their name that was good um, some people knew their name more than once. <laughs> I'm probably kicking some people to the curb here. Um, but you, you see, you get an, a graphical representation, okay? We also had the question, well, can I print these out? Yes, you can, right? So you go to the individual tab, and then you see you have a print button. So you could, if you wanted to, go to Michael Y because that's the one that you wanted to print out and you could print it out. Now, again, this is just an attendance test. This isn't really a, a good form to do this demo. So I'm gonna try and find one real quick that is a sign in that I use for, um, yeah, here we go, for Google Classes, when I get to do face-to-face, -face. hopefully soon, hopefully soon. So here is, a form without any responses, right? Wrong, because I've been using this since 2019. If I hit the spreadsheet button right here, view responses and spreadsheets, and this is what Farzana already did, okay? You will see that here are all of the answers that were on the form, none of them. But look what I did. If you can see way down at the bottom of my screen here, I see, <gasps> They're all the responses that I got from HLP USD. Here are all the responses that I got from uh, West Contra Costa, from NBAC down in LA, from May of 19, 2019, Mount Diablo. So you can reuse a form by using two things. You, uh, well, a couple things right here. Now this form, I'm not accepting any response or I am accepting responses, but there aren't any there. But let's say I, I went and did I wor a workshop or I had a quiz for my class, right? And after the quiz, I turn it off like that, right? So now nobody can do the quiz again, okay? Just wanted to show you that. Um, or Maybe I have a registration for an event, okay? And then we want to use that same registration form for the next event. So what I would do is I would go to the skinny snowman or the kebab, and I would unlink the form. What that does is it tears itself away from the sheet that where all the answers are going. It tears Melinda? itself away. From, yes. 
Can you make it a little larger, please? A little larger, screen? sure. There we go. All right, so let me, let me re re redo this. So okay. we're going to pretend we have responses, okay? Um, let's say I've got 50 responses. Everybody registered, and I, now I want everybody to register the next day, okay? So I want to make sure that I have a fresh new spreadsheet for the next day. So what I would do is go to the skinny, I go to the responses tab on my form. I go to the skinny snowman, where is it? click it. By the way, you can get email notifications for new responses. If this is a really popular form, your email is gonna get just bing, 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 all over the place. So what you do is you unlink the form so that we can reuse it. Okay, now I'm going to click that. And I get this big scary message, oh my gosh. Ah! Okay, don't worry about it. Trust the magic, select the unlink button right here. Okay, so now when people fill out my form, all of the answers are still going here. No worries, they're still going into the form. They're just not going into a sheet. So now what I have to do is tell it, hey, I want you to go to a sheet. So I need to select my response destination. I go back to that skinny, skinny snowman, select response destination. And I could at this point create a new, a new spreadsheet or I'm going to select an existing spreadsheet and then hit select. And now I have to remember which spreadsheet I want this to go to. Well, it was the one that I just opened last, so that made it easy for me, but I might have to go find it. So I'm gonna select this spreadsheet that I want my new form to go into, and it's not really new, it's my reused, my recycled form. I'm gonna hit select, okay? And I, there were two messages that just popped up, linking to spreadsheet and then spreadsheet linked. So if I wanna open my spreadsheet, I can click this right here. And now, I don't know if you noticed, but when I first showed you this, it said we were on form responses 18. Now I'm on form responses 19. So it added another sheet to an already existing sheet. So that way you can recycle your form. I wanted to cover that because we're, we're short on time, <laughs> all right? So um, I was supposed to start with quizzes and I'm gonna do this really, really quick. Quizzes is basically a form that has points. That's all the quiz is. Farzana, did you have a question or a comment? I have, I mean, there are a few questions. Okay. Um, so you, you wanna look at them or just quickly tell you? Sure, you go ahead and tell me. Um, yeah, uh, let's start with one. It says, is there an easy Google form for attendance for students who have attended a Zoom meeting? So basically, they, you know, uh, any interface between Zoom and Google Classroom. So do you have any in info on that? Um, I tell you, there, yeah, you can always have the link ready. Okay, so um, right here, I mean, if, if, those of you that are following along, if you want to open up a new tab and go to goo.gl5ymm9, yes, it is case sensitive. You could fill this form out right now. I am telling you in the Zoom. Now, is there a way for you to be filling it out in the Zoom window? No. Your students have to be able to do what you're doing. They have okay. to be able to minimize the screen or resize the screen, open up another tab, go to the form. So that would be something that you would have to cover ahead of time. So a quiz. Um, I think I have something. Oh, wow, I made everything big. There we go. No, oh, don't do that yet. Okay. <laughs> All right. So I'm going to quickly open up my attendance forms. Attendance test. Here we go. So don't go here. Don't do this. This is a form, right? This is a form where I have the name and email required. And I also made this a quiz, just for grins. Um, I'm going to add a question. Three 
court judge. There we go. All right. So this is going now. I've added a question. Okay. When you add a question, oh, by the way, I didn't show you this. I'm so sorry. I'm going to go to settings. Okay. So I clicked on the gear and now I'm going to go to the quizzes tab. Click. And you have to check this little toggle switch. Make this a quiz. Okay. So you can have all of your questions ready and ready and rock the roll. You can have 50 questions on the form and then you decide, oh, I want to make this a quiz. You can do that. Okay. So you don't have to make it a quiz at the beginning. You can make it a quiz at the end or the middle, wherever you want. Okay. So here, when you do that, as soon as you do that, all of the questions, when you select them, will have this answer key. Okay. Now, I asked a question and Google assumed I wanted it to be a short answer, but I don't. I want it to be a multiple choice. So we're going to, um, we're going to type in some names. Okay, and we're going to type in another name. And it's always good to have the correct name. when you're having a quiz or the correct answer, I should say. Google doesn't decide which of these is correct. You do. So when you make your form a quiz, you go to the questions and you click on answer key. Click that little blue, it's a link. And it's gonna change things up a bit. Okay, so now you're in the edit quiz mode. So now I can decide who was the first female Supreme Court judge. And if I mark it, if I mark this answer correct, if I mark Marjorie Olivides is the correct answer, then the form will accept that and only accept that as the correct answer, <laughs> all right? So the teacher has to know the, the correct answer and has to select the correct answer. The students do not see this. They do not see this. At this point, I also get to decide how many points I want to make it, unless I've made my quiz a default point value. So I get to decide. You can put anything up here. You can make this 999, as many points as you want. Okay? Look what I did here. I made both of these answers have to be correct. Both of them have to be selected in order for this question to be correct. If I don't like when I've selected, I can change it because I'm the owner of the form. And again, you can make a quiz as big or as small as you want. We're just going to make this five points. Okay. Add answer feedback. For correct answers or for incorrect answers. For incorrect answers, you might put something like, ooh, you need to study. And then I also might add a video to something that I know about on YouTube that explains who the first Supreme Court judge was who was female, or a link to a site that we've been studying in class. And then when the students get the, the feedback, they'll see this link or this video, okay? Or for correct answers, we could go, good job. And as a treat, I add a video of the, uh, I don't know, the, <laughs> the, the frog riding, riding a motorcycle. You know, it's just a fun thing, all right? Or you could lead them to another maybe study, okay? Um, I am not going to do this. This is just something I know teachers love to give feedback. So there you go. That's how you do it, answer feedback. Now I'm going to hit done here, and that's going to take me back to the question. And when I'm looking at the question, you notice I see this little green arrow. Okay, only I see that, or that little green check. Only I see that. If I go to preview mode right now, I'm testing my form, you don't see the green check because now Google thinks I'm a student or I'm just someone filling out the form. All right, we're going to go ahead and fill this out so that we can see. And remember, I required this. And I require email. And I'm going to hit submit. And your response has been recorded. Now on my quizzes, I allowed the respondents to view the accuracy. And when I do that, I'm given the correct answer, 
right there. So that's, again, test out your form. Do I want my students to see this? If when they're sitting side by side in a lab and they're taking a quiz, I might not want them to, okay? So just keep that in mind. If they're at home, and, and this is just a study guide, this isn't a test, I might want them to see that, just as a study guide. Where do all the answers go? They all go in the responses tab. So now I added a question that none of these 40 people saw. That's something to keep in mind too. Make sure when you create your form or you create your quiz, you do not allow people to access it, to submit until you're 100% sure it's ready. Because if you add questions after a form has already been submitted, you're gonna get some things that look like this. So here I know that Michael filled this out on April the 3rd, and here's an answer on April the 15th, right? Only I saw the question, or only the last person who filled out the form saw the question. None of these people up here saw the question. So make sure your form is done, son, before you let people see it. Um, in the, the ebook, numbers five and six, uh, or chapters five and six, if you will, they're a little more advanced, okay? Again, we're having an office hours every Monday, Wednesday, and Friday. So if you need, if you get stuck somewhere on a form, please come into the office hours and we'll help you out. They're at different times. Um, let's see, on Monday, it's at one o'clock or 10. Mm, somebody's typing it in the chat, I'm sure by now. On Wednesday, I know it's four to five. <laughs> And on Friday, it's either one or 10. So <laughs> look on the OTAN calendar and you'll see that, okay? Um, and then you can sign up for it and, and we'll be there. There'll be lots of OTAN staff ready and willing to help you and maybe even give you a one-on-one -on -one in their own meeting rooms. So right. um, at the very end here, now remember I told you this ebook was, um, oh, I'm on the wrong one, here we go. The one I was just on, the one I was just showing to you, and you're probably saying, well, it's the same one. It is, but it isn't. Okay, let me explain the one that you're viewing right now. This, and I can tell there are two people here. This is the live ebook. This is live. Okay, so the table of contents, everything, it's like, if I have to make a change, then you will see it. Okay, if I have to move this button over just a little bit and then you come back to the form, you're gonna see that button move just a little bit or some text was added or whatever. It changes, okay? I am going to right now give you the link to the exact same ebook that will not share, or I'm sorry, that will not change. Okay, so if you wanna copy this down, this is the link that will take you to a, the exact same presentation. It's stuck in time to, I think the last change I made was 7.30 this morning. It is stuck in that time. So copy this down, write it down, or open it now, and then you can go to file, make a copy. And I would suggest the entire presentation, okay? That way you get your own copy of this handout that is stuck in time. I would also suggest that you keep that preview link, the one that I gave to you at the very beginning. And um, you'll always see that one updated. So if you need a little refresher, use the preview link. If you want to share this handout with your, your colleagues or even with your students, you want them to learn how to use forms, then by all means, file, make a copy. Okay, that's the form that is stuck in time. And the live form is almost the same link without the share at the end of it. So bit.ly OTAN forms. Okay, so copy those two down. Uh, please review how to share the form with students. Okay, 
That question came up a lot. I'm going to go ahead and start sharing. This is going to be really quick. There are lots of ways to share a form, folks. Google gives us so many options. Sometimes it's, it's boggling. All right. So to share a form, you can open your form, go to the eyeball, the preview. Okay. So you open your form, you go to preview and you select this link. Now, Farzana gave, some you, gave you some uh, ideas on how to shorten the link. Um, I use Bitly. Uh, you know, there's all kinds of things to shorten the link. Or you can just take this really long link, open an email, right? Take this long link and copy it, all right? Open up an email, paste it in the email, and then type, okay, everybody go to this form, okay? <laughs> or... You could also use Google Classroom. Now, I'm not gonna show that because we've already had a webinar on it and it's kind of, it's a little complicated, but not too much. But if you do it through Google Classroom, then your students see it. When they come to Classroom, they'll see the form. You don't have to send it to them, okay? Another way, if you wanted to, would be to hit the send button and then put everybody's email address in here, okay? Um, and it sends the form to them, the form link. If you also click this box, include form in email, this doesn't always work. It depends on the email, um, but some, most times it will open up the form in the email along with the submit button. So everything's done right there for them in the email. We also had this come up, right? There's a shortened URL. It doesn't make it too short. I don't really like using that. And then the embed code. This is if you have a Google site or a Weebly, Weebly or a Wixly or whatever, <laughs> you, have a, you have a site, okay? So you add a site, you select this link, you copy it, and then you paste it into a, um, a site. Um, and actually with Google Sites, you don't even need this. All you have to do is go to your Google site and tell it to insert the form, <clears throat> it does it for you.